Secular Sakai is asking, if any Islamic nation manages to become fully secular and democratic with a population that openly accepts all type of non-Muslim citizens as full societal equals within the next hundred years, which do you think it might be? hundred years? It's really hard to predict what's going to happen in a hundred years. Almost impossible. Fair enough. But given how things are now. Um, Saudi Arabia might crash because True. of oil prices falling in, in the one. So maybe the, maybe from the ashes of what is left after Saudi Arabia crashes, something truly secular democratic might rise but but you don't you don't know what could rise out of ashes it could also be the other way around i'm just saying like that could be um that's true that's very true honestly yeah. this is this is a big if this is a major contingency but if the regime falls i think it, it could be iran mm, secular democracy that is at peace or continuous war the just is secular democratic that accepts all types of non-muslims or maybe just different types of muslims non-muslims and different types of muslims wait i got it it's people. actually uae it's uae never mind it's uae why why uae because it, it's just too too dependent on international trade that it's so motivated mm. so motivated to get there Probably UAE, I don't know. Or maybe Kuwait. Oh, man, Kuwait has a whole lot of problems, though. I know, mm. I know. But their the motivation to get there is high. And the yeah. barriers, they don't have the two holy cities in them as a barrier and a whole bunch of Wahhabis. Like Saudi Arabia has the motivation to get there, but it has a, pop, has a huge percentage of the population not majority, but still a significant pop percentage of the population who are very, and the Islamic world, who would be very interested in not, not letting the two holiest cities to be fallen under secular democracy, right? So that's what Saudi Arabia has against it. But the UAE and Kuwait are very interested into being part of the world liberal order, given how much they depend on trade and tourism, and they don't have those barriers and they have leaders who are more capitalist than Islamic, right? So, what do you think about Malaysia or Indonesia? Oh, Qatar, Qatar also, Qatar also has that potential. Okay, Malaysia and Indonesia are already kind of there, but they're moving gently in the opposite direction. So, know, the, the population is actually like seems pretty Islamized. Yeah. So, like the problem with Malaysia and Indonesia is that they're way ahead of everybody else. But we're talking about things changing in the 100 years. And in the short term, they seem to be gently moving in the opposite direction of where they should be. So that's why we're not considering them. So like, if we can, if we give them a score of, of, I don't know, 60, and we're giving this, you know, like UAE and Kuwait a score of 30, the problem is they're going from 50 to 49, and they're going from 30 to 31 and 32, right? So we're trying to figure out based on trends where people are going to be in 100 years. So it's difficult. It's so difficult to predict these things. Um, Tunisia uh, and Morocco are also way ahead, but gently moving in the wrong direction, especially Tunisia's democracy was just ex recently ex challenged extremely. I don't even know if we could call Tunisia a democracy right now. It's debatable. The, the last of the um, Arab Spring countries was turned into a failure. So we had, like, when it came to the Arab Spring, we had no positive results except Tunisia, which turned into, like, a functioning democracy. And now that ha with that falling as well, we, we could officially say that the Arab Spring was a 100% failure. <laughs> Other, <laughs> other than maybe it's long-term benefits from popularizing yeah. dissent, maybe other than that. I mean, France wasn't, you know, 
prosperous yes. and the way that they were you know, the nation we identify as france now didn't really come into existence until over a hundred years after their revolution so yeah so people are saying what happened in tunisia arguably a coup i don't know if you guys are following um, I, think, <laughs> I think definitely a coup like i think it's 100 percent a coup <laughs> Yeah, democracy has stopped. Like the parliament and the constitution was violated. It, basically, the president the president just took over, and it's a semi dictator now, right? Now. Anyway. The reason why I said Iran is because I know how um, liberal a lot of the population is, and how much they really want change. But honestly, I'm worried that if the regime does fall and that another form of governance comes in its place, I actually worry about the the well being of Muslims. So the problem with Iran is that out of the 80 million people living there, um, hold on, let me see what percentage, potentially between, I don't know, between one and 16 million of them is, okay, let's be honest, 16, around 16 million of them supports the Islamic Republic of Iran based on Stats, which okay? is way more than you need to maintain that state yeah but out of this 16 million i think it's easy to say at least a hundred thousand of them are willing to die for maintaining an order that is supposed to be the representative of imam, imam mahdi on earth right like I think out of 16 million of them, more than a million of them would say they would, but let's say at least a hundred thousand of them actually would. Okay. So keep that in mind and also realize that ISIS, ISIS at, a, at its peak had only 40,000 members, right? So this would be a, a something that was a, a militia group, double the size of ISIS, way more funded way more trained in warfare and way more connected around the Middle East. So even if you have a secular democracy, even if you bring secular democracy in Iran, I don't think these people are just going to be pack it and go home and be like, oh, okay, I guess we, we were voted out and we have secular democracy right now. I don't think that's going to happen. So I don't think they're just going to let, let things be. And remember, ISIS managed to like, almost bring both Iraq and Syria to its knees. Imagine what a group like that could do. So that's why, yeah. So that's why I don't know if, if that's possible. Anyways, but basically what I'm saying is that if, if the Islamic Republic ever falls and people bring secular democracy to Iran, I'm still not going to Iran. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm still staying away for good, okay? So that's what I'm saying. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.